Hi there, my name's Becca and um, I'm an actor and an activist in what I now laughingly call my adult life. Um, and I think a lot of that comes from the fact that when I was a kid, my mum took me to Greenham Common Women's Peace Camp and I was growing up around really dynamic, inventive, very artistic, often women. Um, and it was amazing to sit around and talk to them and see how their passions and politics and revelations influenced their their the output they had into the world and often how that took an artistic um, turn. Um, one of the most artistic areas, I think, or an area that was particularly a strong draw for artists at Greenham Common was Greengate, um, which is uh, was a, one one of a very, a very uh, wooded, natural, quite beautiful area, um, and a lot of the women that I've spoken to who really loved it there are musicians and writers and actors and performers and artists and poets. Um, one of them is um, a woman called Maggie who um, is just just the most remarkable woman who absolutely loved life at Greengate and was very good friends with Monica Shu. Um, who uh, she felt, you know, cha it changed it changed her whole outlook, the way that uh, her time there was spent, and she says that uh, it was that time with women who were combining this this uh, how they would communicate their 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 politics to each other in a way that elevated and and that and developed their spirituality and their and their creative process she says that, that she took that and made that into she's founded two women's refuges and she also had a kind of collective um that created an amazing women's feminist arts magazine that ran for years and brought together poetry and pictures and newsletters and opinion pieces and was the the absolute heart of the women's movement uh, which she talks about as a, a really powerful um, output of her time spent at Greengate and working with painters and writers like Monica Shu. Um, and another woman uh, who I really, really love talking to called Tanya, she talks about how the fact that all of Greengate quite often was hung with mirrors and that quite often women would come there and have um, a hair cutting ceremony so I know from speaking to other women that quite often they would come with like whatever their hair meant to them uh, my friend Sue uh, she had a big mohawk a big afro mohawk but she was so targeted by the police uh, partly for being a black woman living there and it was so easy for them to just grab her hair and get hold of her and pull her by her afro that she shaved her head in the end but that in itself for a lot of women at Greenham became a, a massive statement of re reclaiming or, uh, their femininity or their femaleness and I suppose shedding shedding the the trappings of what femininity might mean um, and so at Greengate they used to have hair cutting ceremonies amidst all these mirrors which sounds tremendously powerful um, and then um, Tanya, who's a wonderful artist and performer herself, she speaks about this um, action about raising the dragon where they created this 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 sort of performance art piece that they could this was they'd sewn and crafted and they could all in, inhabit this kind of giant this these elements of a dragon they'd stitched together. And she writes really beautifully when well, she speaks about it in this lovely archive that I helped to put together called Green and Women Everywhere. So yeah, you can listen to over 200 women talk about their experiences at Green and there. But I just wanted to tell you what she said, particularly about um, something that happened to her um, at the Raising the Dragon um, sort of art action. And she said it was amazing. They, they looked... There's about 40 women at least uh, who are all in this structure they'd made and they all linked arms and they looked like they'd come out of the Amazonian jungle and she can remember moving forward all at the same same time and then something just happened, um, motivated her to sing. She says, I, I had this voice just emerged and, and, and I knew what it was and why it was spiritual and I knew that it had to be this particular voice on this day and it would reach the universe and be there inside and outside of myself, which sounds, she says, a bit wanky, really, but but it was also extraordinary. And at that moment, all the other women echoed this keening that she was making. And she remembers 10 seconds or so, maybe this call, also supported by the call of all these other women, and the energy that was created was just absolutely extraordinary. And the call felt quite natural, like a call from somewhere else. And then it was like a serpent call in some way, 
and the echo came and this extraordinary hour at least of of power and of ritual and it was never planned no one said this is what we're going to do it just happened and this calling and the sounds and the voices that came out on that particular evening well, they were just phenomenal and she says i know that changed me forever i know that changed me forever <laughs>